office to go find a better space and have the team hold you accountable to the results of that. Okay, what's one of the other challenges that you find as a team? I need to be able to a lot better at follow up. Okay, so follow up for John, but as a team. Closing. Okay, yes. so I think, I think we have big challenges when it comes to closing. Closing. You know, the only one in here who has been publicly told anything about their um, closing uh, um, abilities. abilities is Connor, because he got a nice email that said you got big balls, Connor, <laughs> from a broker. So the rest of us, though, we you know we kind of skirt. Yeah, it's kind of a I'm kind of a backhanded joke, but <laughs> some of us um, like we we're not good at closing. We're not good at holding firm and saying, nope, this is what we're gonna do even if we lose the deal over this. Like, that's what power does. When we risk losing the deal, that's when the negotiation happens. And that's the power. She's on? Okay, cool. Good morning, Shannon. Oh, hold on. <laughs> okay, technical Shannon. Shannon. Hello, are you there? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. All right, good morning. I'm gonna make this real quick for you and then we're gonna get back to our um, other numbers. So what is your goal of units closed for 2019, Shannon? Well, I just looked out 30. 30. 30, okay. Yeah. 30 closed units. And what is, what is the minimum number of units you must close such that by not closing those, you're gonna go ahead and cut off your arm and mail it to your ex. <laughs> 25. Huh? 25. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> Shannon, um, 30 deals is what? Three deals a month? That's three deals a month. So that is slightly less than a deal a week. So three deals, uh, a deal a week, three deals a month. What are you gonna do in 2019 to ensure that you hit those deals? I would say lead generate. Okay. And lead generate. Okay, lead generate how much? How often? Um, like four hours. Okay, minimum of four hours a day. How many days a week? Five days. Five days a week. Ross, you're taking notes on her? Great. And what's something else that needs to change so that you can hit these that maybe right now you're struggling with? that you're not hitting at a high level? Um, I would say appointments. Appointments. Okay. Um, appointments set or appointments held? Appointments set. Okay, appointments set. Okay, and then can I add one thing? Yeah. And I'm not telling you to do this, but I want you to think about it. Calendar your 2019 personal um, events family time, time with your son, all of that stuff, calendar that in now, and then calendar in your business. And I would encourage you to get real purposeful on your business so that you can reward yourself with your personal time. Just, okay. it's, a, it's a mind shift. And I want, I'm not mm -hmm. telling you that, I'm not telling you to make it your pain, I'm just saying you're working towards those vacations. I get it, and, 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 and you paid the price for it, so that's okay. Yeah. Now you have the opportunity to shift in 2019 and say, you know what, I'm gonna take just as many vacations because my son means that much to me. I'm just going to work my ass off so that I can go on them and be purposeful about the vacations. Okay, so awesome. Great. Cool, thank you. Awesome, thank you. All right, so what's one more thing as a team we probably need to address It's a discussion. Okay. It's, a, it's, it's a room full of board members that says, all right, in order for us to hit our goals in 2019, and in order for the team to hit their goals in 2019, this is something that needs to be addressed and possibly adjusted. I think what Con's trying to say is we have something in mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the one thing I had in mind was the prospecting. Absolutely.
The other thing was, and I, I help people out individually, and that was their closing, um, you know, being a better closer, uh, conversion. follow up with them to the point where we don't feel like we're bothering them or we're actually, you know, we feel good about making the call so early as to when they were thinking about actually having the call. That's internal. So how many room how many in the room by show of hands agree that lead generation as a as a as a job needs to be a high priority for the team. Like we need to hold each other accountable, higher accountability barricade our time, redo the office, or put up little, you know, cardboard, and whatever we need to do, we need to like put some time and energy into our legion. Show of hands. Okay, it's, it's like everybody but one. Um, how many in the room believe that follow-up of our database, of our nurtures, of our leads, of our clients, of our contacts, all that stuff, is as much or more important than legion? system in place for lead follow-up? We'll, okay. we'll get there okay. if that's the decision. Um, how many believe that honing in on our time management as a team, and when I say time management, that could also be our, our team trainings, our team meetings, our team events, like how much time the team takes from you individually, it could be any of that, is as much or more important than lead gen. Okay? And how many believe that how many believe that there's some sort of drunk monkey in the room on the team that is creating some sort of, of drama as much or more important than Legion? Okay, well, so I mean, that's just an internal, like, yeah, I think, I mean, I think because if that drunk monkey's telling you something, then. Well, but this is an opportunity for somebody to say, hey, yes, my drunk monkey says this is the issue I have on the team or with the team or at the team or whatever. So that's why I'm not. I don't know what's in your head, no you <laughs> but what I do know is lead gen and follow-up seem to be the two team-driven entities that we need to address real quick. So do we have any more questions on lead gen? No. So who is going to be the one person in the room that is going to be the police of our team office, lead gen time, barricading it, they are going to be the voice on behalf of the team. Um, like when they see people are getting too chitty chatty, Brandon, good. Anybody disagree with that no, With that, that uh, nomination? Good, so during Legion time in the office, he will police that space. And he will hold everybody accountable that this is Legion time. And if you have a personal conversation or you guys wanna chit chat and share you know, recipe cards, <laughs> take it outside. Same thing goes for me, same thing goes for Amelia, for Ross, for anybody else. I mean, I walked in there the other day and he flipped around and said, that's awesome, after Legion. And I'm like, you know what, I appreciate that, thank you, I'm out of here. Because I think we're all victims of it and we're all contributors to it, all of us. Because we all want what we want when we want. And it's so easy to say, Legion time, eh, I don't wanna do it anyways, I'm just gonna do something else. So with Legion, I'm gonna tag in there your script practice. Because that is part of your legion. That is the preparation for the legion. That's overcoming the objections. That's getting ready. That is like getting energized. So that is your legion. Okay, they go together. Make no mistake. Yes. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about follow-up. So it's interesting because we have Patty here with us. So I knew that follow-up was going to be the second biggest challenge that we have because Patty and I are constantly talking about how bad we as a team, and I'm using the word bad intentionally, how bad we are as a team at follow-up. And so Patty's job for 2019 is the 39 touch. So who in this room does not know what a 39 touch is? Okay, so a 39 touch is 39 systematic touches over 12 months for your past clients, repeat and referrals, hots, sphere of influence, and anybody that you want 
to get into business with that is not a, um, a contact or a lead. Well, it's everybody so, in the database though, right? Not, no, 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 it's not. No? No, it's hot. So anybody who is a past client, a nurture or a hot, yes. Okay. But if they're archived, if they're a watch, they may not be. Okay. Is, is that something that's new that's happening? No, that's, <clears throat> our database is too big and so it's getting compartmentalized. Okay. So that's why. Um, so Patty's job is this 39 touch. So this 39 touch, and she's gonna email out everybody a copy of the 39 touch, is five events, five contacts, phone contacts or person to person contacts inviting to those events. Now if you're doing math, how many is that now? 10. Yeah. Patty, do you have it open in front of you? Okay, can you can you rattle off the other ones because they're a little more specific? You can just go through January through December if that's easiest. Okay, we have three um, Okay, so we have you're breaking up a little bit, so say them one at a time and I'm gonna reiterate it. January. Yep. New Year's postcard. Okay, so Happy New Year postcard. Sent out on your individual behalf as well as on behalf of the team. This is on a so Brandon name. and Team Tiffy, thank you. You know, we wish you an awesome 2019. If you're looking to buy or sell, no one's any touch player. They're not all asking for business though. Some of them are ju just, just yeah. how are you? Nice to see you. We want to work here. Yeah, here's something that's going on. Okay, next. Newsletter. Okay, newsletter. Next. It will be sent every 15th of the month. Yeah, newsletter gets sent out on the 15th. What is the newsletter? Specific? It's gonna talk about the market. It's gonna talk about uh, you know new shops opening up, whatever it is. We're gonna be pulling the newsletter from newsletter companies. Okay, so uh, February will be Valentine's postcard. Okay, Valentine's postcard. Newsletter. Newsletter. And you're gonna get this all sent to you. I just want you to start thinking about all the things that she's going to do on your behalf. Okay. Okay, Mark. It's newsletter. Yeah. Say that one more time. April event, market April event with a phone call. Okay, so we're gonna be marketing April's event. Okay, just try thinking of stuff. With a phone call. So does Patty do that or does she tell us to do that? She's gonna tell you to call anybody who's connected directly to you. Got it. If you have not had conversations with these people in a certain time frame, she is going to do it or the ISAs are gonna do it on your behalf. Got it. Next. Preparing for spring email. Okay. Preparing your house for spring, preparing your garden for spring, all that stuff. Spring, you know, spring forward your spring forward. your home. Yeah. Next. April newsletter. Okay. Event extravaganza. Okay. Invite everybody you know, everybody you want to know, even the people you know that you don't like to the extravaganza. Next. May. Happy Mother's Day. Okay. For mothers. Newsletter. Newsletter. June. Happy Father's Postcard. Happy Father's Day Postcard. Newsletter. Newsletter. Water drive. A what? Water drive. Okay, water drive. July, say it one more time. <laughs> newsletter. Newsletter. No, hold on. July is uh, Happy Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July. What is it? It's an email, a newsletter, a postcard. No, that's a, uh, an email. Okay, an email. Happy Happy Fourth of July email. Newsletter on the fifteenth. Newsletter on the fifteenth. Full day invite. Full that's day. Gonna be a phone call. Okay, a phone call inviting them to the August pool party. Which we do in Henderson. Brandon is always our token uh, 
team mascot he goes just to make sure, you know, our clients are okay. Yeah. Yeah. Karen was the only one there. <laughs> <laughs> Josephine. Where is it? Josephine. Okay, okay. next. Postcard. Newsletter. Newsletter. Market event phone call. Market event phone call. Market the uh, September event phone call. Yes, we're gonna market uh, October's uh, event. Okay, October's. Okay. Uh, October is gonna newsletter. Newsletter. In the event, which is intent to. So the idea is, and this is a costly event, but the idea is that we rent a pumpkin patch for the day. We invite all of our clients and their family as a, an appreciation, kind of like a pie giveaway for somebody else. They get a pumpkin, they get hot dogs, we have our vendors there, so our lender, and our escrow, and our home warranty, and all those people, they help sponsor that. But it's only for our people for a certain period of time. And they get a pumpkin, they can always pay to upgrade their pumpkins and do all that stuff. They could, Kids get to ride on the rides, they get hot dogs, they get drinks, all that stuff. That would be my intention. The other idea is that we get pumpkins and we go and deliver them to people that are past clients, referrals, repeats. Personally, I like this idea better. Me too. Um, okay. Have them come to us. Yeah. Um, so think about it though, that's the idea right now. Next. Market the event for December. Which is a phone call. Okay. Next. September will be newsletter. Newsletter. Event. We were talking about movie theater. Uh, we were talking about toy drives. We were talking about car drives. And we were talking about shoes. I think the movie theater sounds really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So here's, here's what I'd like to have happen, because you're right, they all sound great. <laughs> we need to pick one, and what I'd like to have happen is I'd like it to be done by a committee. I'd like two or three people who are passionate about these, you know, these, these events and giving back and things like that to kind of run this and make decisions, come back to the team at a team meeting and say, hey, we, we've narrowed it down to this because of cost and location and timing and all that. We need your input and just kind of run with that. Um, give me needs uh, list early on, say this is what we need to buy, this is what we need to have sponsored, and just kind of run those things. Because I, I love the movie idea, I love the, I love the, uh, um, you know, the toy drive, I love all of that. And there's nothing even saying we can't do all of those things. We have a 39 touch, it must be in place, that's what her job is to market on. We can do additional things and she's gonna talk a little bit about that. So okay. So that's December. And happy holiday uh, postcard. Okay, so then you should have an, ex uh, an auxiliary list there of three or four items. I think it's down in the bottom left or the bottom right. Yes. Okay, what are those? We have an anniversary, anniversary mailer. So if you have a past repeat referral that you know of their home anniversary or their wedding anniversary, either or, I would prefer the home. I would never really recommend you do a marketing program on somebody's physical anniversary because you never know how positive those things are. Um, I'm just saying, some of you who really know your past clients or your, your friends, I'm okay with that. But an anniversary card. And an anniversary card of the orphans. What's an orphan? The other side. The other side. If you represented the seller, you know the buyer bought the home, you know their address. You represent the seller. How awesome would it be if you sent an anniversary to the buyers? Because I'll bet you their agent's not doing it. 
there's probably a one in 50 chance that they are. I see the higher than that. What about an anniversary postcard? And, and uh, Patty writes this down, because this is something that we can do. An anniversary postcard to the orphan agent. Hey, we closed the deal last year. I'm still remembering that. You're awesome. Do you want to meet for coffee? How you doing? How you doing at your brokerage? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Okay. What else? Life event. So a life event. So if we know somebody, if we know somebody is, if we know somebody is getting married, having a baby, uh, retiring, uh, sympathy. Okay. Life events are not always positive. Sorry to hear of your loss. Whatever that is, send them something. Okay, and then the last one? Or is that referral. it? Referral. Huh? Referral. Yeah, so then send something as a thank you for the referral. Every time somebody gives you a referral, you send them something. You should be sending them something twice. Rewarding them for thanking of you and sending you the referral. That should be the $5 Starbucks gift card. Hey, thanks for thinking of me. Here you go. I'll send you something for five bucks whether I close the deal or not. They keep them coming. You're just rewarding good behavior. And then send them something when the deal closes. And it doesn't matter if they refer it to you or you refer it to them. And I would encourage you to send things in the mail or physically have it dropped off. I would encourage that because people still like to get mail. <coughs> How many in this room still check their mailbox? Yeah, I know it's gone down. And how many get excited when there is a personal stamp on there, a handwritten to you, that looks like it's personal? Like that, you throw the rest of the stuff away. You open that up. Yeah, true. We should be doing that more often. Absolutely, very true. Okay, so is there any questions on the thirty-nine touch? Awesome. So now we're going to spend five minutes talking about the database and our job within the database because that is the second most important job. We spend three quarters of our prospecting time lead generating. We should be spending one quarter of our prospecting time lead follow up. Because the lead follow up, believe it or not, is more important than the lead generation when it comes to getting your check. Think of it this way. Lead generate is funding my business. Lead follow up is funding my life. I lead generate unlicensed agents, agents getting into production, agents getting into higher levels of production, because that, that generates business for my business. I spend my time following up with you guys, building your business, because that funds my life. That's the check cash. That's you getting a transaction. So this is you getting into production. This is you getting into closing. It's the same mindset. So if you're not putting enough time into your lead follow-up, leverage Patty, make sure everything's in the database, she will be contacting your clients. She will not contact your clients arbitrarily if you have good notes in the database. She just wants to make sure that your clients are being contacted. And when I say client, I use the term loosely because they could be, they could be a lead, they could be a prospect, they could be a contact, they could be a consumer, we don't know where they're at in the lead pipeline until we get in there and we can see whatever, whatever tags we have on there. So I'm just gonna call them all a client for the sake of the conversation. Okay, any questions on that? So I encourage everybody to get really good at lead follow-up and database management because that is where your money's going to be in 2019, make no mistake. If you can get them into the system, we will systematically communicate with them on your behalf and you will convert more leads. You will. And then your focus is on lead generation and you're only spending a little bit of your time and energy in lead follow-up. Okay? Any questions on that? Stop directly from them if you need to get into that in the contact. And we're not even, yes, you're correct. And we're not even gonna focus so much on command for today because if we're not really systematic in brevity, we're gonna fail command. We're gonna fail it. Command has like automatic birthday um, yep. emails. And so does brevity. But garbage in, garbage out. 
if you don't put the information in, if you don't follow the Ford analogy that says, hey, I'm just following up with you, how you doing, great. Listen, you had said something last month about you know your son in, in, in baseball, Little League. Hey, how'd that game go? Hey, when's his birthday anyways? I, I, I don't have that in my system here. I mean, I like to know everything about everybody because I like to send out thank you cards and stuff, birthday cards. When's his birthday? Well, I got you. What's your birthday? What's your husband's birthday? When's your cat's birthday? Your dog's? <laughs> Like, use the opportunity to just build your database with all the facts. Then you can search it and say, who has a birthday in December? And then if it's November, you pull them, you label them, you do your, your card, you go to Amelia and say, I need stamps, you pop them in the mail. Patty will find them automatically, she'll send them a digital email. There's all kinds of cool things we can do. My realtor sent my cat a happy birthday card last month. <laughs> He's just so great. They post that shit on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, who's your realtor? I don't sell. My realtor didn't do that. Yeah. Those are ways that you will gain more market share in 2019. Just do things systematically, do them a little more accurately, and do them a little better. A lot of your competition, they're not doing any of this. They're not doing any of this. So, that is that. Um, I don't want to focus today on lead genning activities, but I do want that to be in your head. So. You all were asked to pull out a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper. You wrote your units on it. Now I want you to brain dump for 90 seconds. And whoever has a stopwatch, I'll let you. 90 seconds. I want you to brain dump everything you can do for lead gen. Everything. And it can be anything. Remember, lead gen is the activity. What are all the ways you can regenerate? Are we going? Go. And I will, at about 60 seconds in, I will throw out some ideas for those of you who are, are uh, mind blocked. But just write it down. Just write it down. As fast as you think of it, put it down. Legion. Legion. How you can legion. Where you can tools you use to lead gen. So you hire a guy named Lee, give him a bottle of gin. <laughs> Brain dump. Write it down, doesn't matter. Okay. Call expires. You can call FISBOs. You could drive for dollars. You can drive around distressed property neighborhoods. You could look on public records. You could get lists of absentee owners, defaults. You could get exotic lists, which are divorce, uh, selective service registrations. You could go to a Starbucks every Saturday morning for four hours and work and prospect from there and let everybody know that you're a real estate agent. You could go to events. Oh. My brain okay. jumping or just right now? Some of you started to stall, yes. so I just started bringing things up. Okay, now I want you to prioritize each one of those. Your number one priority, put a little number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, next to them. Can I have like multiple numbers? Nope. Ones? You can only have one, 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 two, one, three. Rotary. Huh? Rotary. Rotary Club? Yeah. They are a local organization. Um, Older gentlemen. Actually, yeah, I think it's women. Too. Nonprofit. Yeah. Um, and they, uh, they're they a community service club. And so their whole purpose as a 501c3 is to give back to the community. Um, and they, they make some community decisions when it comes to like, you know, city and county stuff. They're, they're a voice for the community. But a lot of, a lot of times they're giving back to, um, so like the youth or scholarships for schools, like things like that. Making. Huh? Grant making. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah. like where their money goes. Mm -hmm. And you've got you've got Shriners, you've got Rotary Club, you've got Toastmaster, you've got Toastmaster. Elks Lodge, you've got VFW. These are all in essence the same kind of community service thing. It's yep. just whatever draws them together as a group. Yep. That's exactly what I'm saying. 
Okay, so now I want you to take one of those and put it in its own list. Yep, so you just put it on the right side, that number one, put it on the right side. So for instance, <laughs> so, door knock Fizbos. Okay, so we're going to use that. So, door knock Fizbos. John, you have? Circle prospecting. Circle prospecting. Open houses. Open houses. Uh, I would encourage you to get more smart with your what actual event. But that's okay, because we're, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I know, right? So, now I want you to brain dump on that number. Brain dump on open houses. What are all of the things that you need to do for the open houses? What are all the things you need to do and say and be for the events? Sure there is. If I say right now, right now, you cannot right leave now. the room, you're staying in the chair, <coughs> circle prospect, can you do it? Yes. No. Ridiculous. Okay. I want you to circle prospect one, two, three Main Street. And I want you to circle prospect to the neighborhood because circle prospect, by sheer definition, is uh, conversations around something. Right. Okay, so can you circle prospect 123 Main Street? I'm sure I can. Okay, right here, right now. Huh. It would be difficult because it's on the phone. Okay. I need a, well, as long as the computer is there to help me out. Do you have the phone number to the neighborhood? I sure do. Okay, do you have, do you have, so. You need, he's trying to, you need a phone. You need a phone. Yeah. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Oh, God, my bad. <laughs> need a list. Need a list. Whole realty. Dialer. Got it. Yep. Totally. Neighbor, uh, you know, two mile neighborhood radius. So think of all of the things. This is a shopping list to achieve that uh, prospecting method. And that buffalo sock smells really good. Okay, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Everything you need to do to achieve that. 20 seconds. Okay, time's up. So now let's prioritize those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next to each one of those. <laughs> well, you can hold you out and have the team give you yours. Can two be one? Uh, you can change it as long as we're. No, I'm saying, can we have two things be number no, one? No, only one thing is number one. Who wants to share their one, and then who wants to share their second one? So their 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 main prospecting. We'll go Brandon first. So you so want me to give you just the your, one your that I gave? Your main legion activity is circle prospecting. Okay, and then your activity or your job in in circle prospecting is what? Hundred conversations a day. Okay. Around a listing, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want me to go through my list of things? Nope. Just, just I want those two. Oh well, my number one and my number two is what you're asking. Yes. So dial list, so call realty. Okay. Choose triple line dialer. Okay. You're yeah. gonna give me your number two, whether you're I wanted it or not. Yeah, John, you're up. You're up. <laughs> um, mine's also circle prospecting. Okay. My number one is call realty. My number two is my computer. And my number three is my dialer. Okay. Who else? Door knock. Tracy. Does anybody in the room not know what a pop pie is? Not a Popeye, not a pop pie. Okay, pop pie. Explain what a pop pie is. 
do Popeyes. 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 Popeyes, you just like create a little gift to deliver it to uh, top clients or uh, new people that you want to do business with or uh, business groups. Uh, what is it called? Popeyes. <laughs> oh, Popeyes. You make something or you and buy it, something? Yeah, you usually, usually you 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 create everything in a bulk environment. So keep your costs low because it's not about the costs. It's about it's about it's about the strategy. No, it's not even about the thought. Believe it or not, because a true pop buy is something that you place in an environment where they are not readily accessible and others are, and it's a way for you to generate business off of the business you already have. For instance, if if Tracy has a, cl a client that closed a deal and she knows where they work. She'll go to their work and leave a pot by with the receptionist with a few extra business cards. And then what happens is she leaves. She's not there to talk. She's actually there to go deliver all the rest of her pot by. The receptionist calls the agent or the, the client. The client comes up, gets the little pot by. And let's, let's say for example, it was a summer. And so she's got a little mason jar filled with, you know, a lemon, uh, lemon thyme, you know, uh, lemonade packet, some sunflower seeds, um, some candy, a couple business cards, and a nice little label that says, you know, uh, summer is is as sweet for me as it is for my referrals or my refers, or something like that. Okay, Pinterest guys, it's an amazing place. She leaves that. She um, disappears. The client comes and grabs it, takes it back to their desk. People the come over and go, <laughs> Oh, what did you get? <laughs> Oh well, I got a pop. I got, I got a. I got a little I gift. Got a I got a gift from my. I got a gift from my realtor. Oh, I don't have a realtor that does that. Oh, here's her business card. Okay. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Or they throw it. Or they throw it in the trash. Now I would encourage. I've seen this happen a lot. I would encourage there to be a call to action on each pop by that says, "Go to this link, like my page, or go to this link and and." Um, give me something for a chance to win something. Because what will they probably do? They'll probably take a photo of their pop by, put it on social media, and now she gets more likes. She can now friend everybody else and she's actually lead generating off of her pop by. So that's a pop by. So, Tracy, did you think about that? So what was your, so what was your, what was your one, two, and three then? Well, create and create the bulk item. Okay, create the perfect pop by. Price cost wasn't one of the measures yeah. in there. Yes, it is. Okay, <laughs> well, it just wasn't the number one. Yeah. It's it is. not number one. It's okay. there. Or, or it's there now. Um, and then deliver, I, I would say, like any other time. Yeah. Okay. Who else wants to share theirs? Door knocking fist votes. You're going to say, Hi. <laughs> My hand, it's in the air. <laughs> All right. Door knocking fist bows. What's the one activity? Number two, the one you just made your number one. Hope I'm not going to confuse you all. And now I want you to write everything that you need to do systematically, theoretically, regarding your time management, your preparation, the time of how long you're going to work on that activity, whatever that is. And I want you to break up on that. So, yeah, so if, if for an example, if if Brandon's one thing is what? Circle prospecting. circle prospecting. And then his main means of circle prospecting is going to be? Cold Realty. Call Cold Realty. Is what it is? Yeah. yeah. Cold Realty. So then what is Brandon going to do <clears throat> to prepare Cold Realty for circle prospecting? Type in the zip code. A half hour before your last call just takes forever. Fine. These are, these are great. I don't understand the so if circle prospecting is going okay. to be your lead gen activity and you're going to use circle prospect or you're going to use Cole Realty to do that, yeah. are you just going to log on to Cole Realty? Well, I mean, yeah. How <laughs> in depth do you want me to go? I, mean, I want you to get really in depth. Like, do you have a property? <laughs> if I'm usually I prospect, if somebody's doing an open house, I'll pull the zip code up. Okay, so locate property. Okay. Log into Cole Realty. Generate a list. Are you going to call from Cole Realty? Are you going to print the list? Are you going to download it? Or are you CSV going to into the write all that down? I actually.
actually want you to mentally work through the job of doing it. So if Tracy is doing pot buys, so her lead generating activity is 10 pot buys a week delivered, and her one thing is what for the pot buys? What is the one thing, your number one? Uh, well, just the recycled error and things generally. Okay, Lost. So, so what I would encourage you to do is decide what they are for 12 months. Yeah. Like make the decision now of what you're going to do every month. Mm. And then what do you have to do every month to get those ready? What's the job? Shop, stay within budget, prepare, put them together, package them up. Is there baking involved? I know you like to bake a lot of your things. Last time I did dog food, that was pretty good, but they were made from a different color. It was pretty cute. Okay. Wow. So did your cost go up? Like if you had a budget of $2 a pot buy, or $5 a pot buy, or $1 a pot buy, and you decided, wow, I wanna try out this bakery, they're gonna give me a real idea, a real good deal, and my cost doubles to do this. If you had it planned out for 12 months, could you possibly source better ingredients, cheaper products, a better deal in advance? For those of you who, who need to buy things, or those of you who need to get lists, like I pay for Cole Realty when they give me a discount code. Yeah, right now, by the way. Huh? That's a discount right now. Yeah, they usually do at the end of the year. Really? So, like, I, I know what I need in my business, and I'll look for the opportunities to save money, get a better deal, get a better product, because I'm running a business. I'm not a fly by the seat of my pants real estate agent. But that's what this exercise now says. It's get in my head, what are all the things that I need to do? What are all the logistics that need to overcome? Because what happens is you guys... You show up at the, at the office, you put your stuff down, you say, I'm gonna lead gen today. Who am I gonna lead gen? Oh, I'm gonna do my circle prospecting. Then you try to get on Cole Realty and it's not working for some reason. And then once you're on it, you can't seem to download it to a CVS file. Once you finally download it to a CSV file, you can't get it into Vulcan because somebody else already has Vulcan lined up. Next thing you know, it's 12 noon, you're like, hey Craig, you going to lunch? That's the reality. So really what you guys just did, and you didn't even realize it, is you just did your one free class. You really just did your one free class. Your one lead generating activity that matters the most to hit your closed unit is this. The five strategies associated with hitting that in this lead gen activity is most important, second most important, third most important, fourth most important, fifth most important. So now how many of you have created a prospecting method of people that you know? So for instance, pop buys. You're gonna have to know who they are, repeat referral, past client, sphere of influence. How many of their prospecting is repeat, um, sphere of influence, past clients? Okay. So you're going to put in your 135 on the first section here. Oh, these aren't blanks. No, nope, that's your 401. These should have all just been blanks. That's okay. So you're gonna, huh? I need a 135. I got some more here. So you're gonna write them here, and then um, you're gonna cross off the stuff that's that's on here. So. Cross off the 15, and Tracy, you would be putting 30 dash 15, okay? And then priority number one, this is going to be um, prospecting people I know, so that's actually correct. And then strategy number one, you're gonna cross that off and you're gonna put um, pot buys and then the activity that you would be doing for your pot buys. So pot buys there, and then the activities. Now how many are using a lead generating method of people that they have not met, do not know. Great, so now what you're gonna do is at the very top of your 135, page one, you're going to cross off the 15, you're going to put yours, a forward slash, 
and then your bottom number. So for instance, Connor would be 40 dash forward slash 24. John would be 77 forward slash 50. Diane would be 30 slash 24. Joanne would, uh, Josephine would be 15 slash 12. Nate would be 20 slash 15. Sharon, blah, 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 blah. You guys need help? Okay, so then you're doing open houses. Okay, and then what are the five strategies starting with the number one most important? So your number one was what? So circle prospecting through Cole Realty, and then, or actually it would be yeah, neighborhood, flyers, all that, and then put those in order. Does anybody not have uh, what they're prospecting? Nope, everybody's got it. Good. And then you would write circle prospecting to open house up there. So circle prospecting, open house. Yep, that's your priority number one. Okay? So now, for those of you who are using your sphere of influence, past clients, repeat, and referral as your number one source of business. That's your number one, one, three, five. Your number two, one, three, five, needs to be people that you do not know, like, and trust. So I want you to repeat the activity. I want you to brain dump all of the ways that you can contact people to generate new business. Then I want you to number those on a scale of one to however many you, you brain dump. And then I want you to take the number one and I want you to think of the 10 business logistical to-dos to achieve that. These are for the two of you who have sphere of influence. You're now focusing on people that you don't have business with. For those of you who focused on people that you didn't have business with, you're going to now focus on people who are in your sphere of influence close friends, families, resident, uh, relatives, they do not have to be in Las Vegas. You're gonna focus on clients, past clients, doesn't matter what business you're in, anybody who you've done business with that is going to give you a five-star business rating, they would be a past client for you. You're gonna focus on repeats and referrals. So what's, what are the different ways that you could prospect them? And then number them. Everybody should have or should be working on their one, their 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 number one three, which according to your uh, your one three five would be priority number one. For all of you except for two, it'll be people you have not met. For two of you, Sharon and Tracy, it'll be have met. And then for the second priority it'll be for the majority of you have met, okay? And for Tracy and Sharon, it'll be have not met. And when you're done with both of those, I wanna know when you're done. When you're done with both of those, stand up. Done with what? When you're done with both of those priorities, Priority one, priority two, stand up. And that's fine, you can use them as an example, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's when I hire a new agent, that's what I'm using. I just, I had asked Ross to bring in blank ones, I don't know that he even has those. Um, so, that's okay. Okay, so you're done. We'll talk about it. No, stand up. Stay standing.
Which one would you like to be uh, as your number two? Well, how would I get to be? Would I be it's Yep, it's list that we can we can get. Okay, well, I'd rather do that then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so then, then you do that. Okay. No. And be specific. Networking events. Yep. Okay, so, so host open houses would be have not met, and then call all listings. So that wouldn't be a number two. That would be something else you could do for your open houses. You could call neighborhood listings, or you call people who have been to those listings, but these would both be, both be have not met. So for priority number two, friends, family, past clients, sphere of influence, have met. And I would encourage you, since he's already printed this, use this information if you're stuck. Because that is, somebody comes on the team that hasn't been in any business, I would I would hold them to that. So you're welcome to rewrite that if you want. Yep. So the sphere of influence is just? The sphere of influence is somebody who knows you, likes you, trusts you, is very close to you. I use the example, which Aiden throws back on me, but I use the example that you know this person so well that you would let them watch your children. That, definition of a sphere of influence. Close personal friend and family. So um, past client, any business you've ever been in, they could even be your dad's past client, somehow they have a relationship to you that says, oh, you were awesome. You took care of me. You did something for me. Previous career doesn't matter. And then repeat referral. So somebody who has maybe gone out looked at a couple of homes with you, never bought a home, maybe somebody who has Bought with you and is intending to buy another. Can I see your side? How are you going to talk to us? What are different ways that we can talk to us? Perfect, thank you. Can I read the book? Okay. Yes, I'm going to read the book. Okay. Thank you. So, phone call, practice support script, load all the information in the database, send a like event, like mail, like a business event. Okay, we're almost there. All right, so everybody's done. All right, take a seat. We're now going to focus on number three, priority number three. Take prospecting for clients out of the equation and think prospecting to better myself. Prospecting for personal growth. Prospecting for better health. That's priority number three. That's priority number three. And if you have it in front of you, you're probably seeing five of the strongest strategies. Oh, I can go back to the original. So I'm going to I'm going to read a book a month and apply three. Yeah, this is personal. Personal business, personal health, personal life, personal family. So I want you to use the same metrics. What's the one thing you need to do in your personal life, such that by doing that, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary? It cannot be tied to a client. Can I just, it cannot be tied to a past deal. Can I just generalize it as growth planning? That's fine, because if you're reading the 135 that's in front of you, it already says that. If you wanted to cheat a little, you're welcome to. You're only cheating yourself. It's kind of like you know Cameron having a donut. <laughs> <laughs> so personal growth, measurable. Need to lose fifty pounds. Do you? No, I don't. I need to reduce my 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 home expenses by thirty percent. What did you say? What's what? I'm just giving you examples. What was the example? Um, I need to lose fifty pounds. I need to reduce my living expenses by 30%. Need to um, pay down my debt. I need to take a vacation. Some of you take too many, some of you don't take enough. True. I need to spend I need to spend four hours one night a week and consider it date night with the person I love the most. Like figure it out cannot be tied to a client or a transaction. Unless the client is the person you're going on date night with. <laughs> then we probably should have another conversation. But it does happen. And Sharon is smiling. <laughs> Presents its
thumb challenges. Definitely. It does look like a thumb challenge, yeah. actually. So, yeah. but this can still tie into the real estate business. Absolutely. You might have to do something in your priority number one or priority number two to help make that happen, or you might have to do this in order for your priority number one and number two to happen. It just cannot be. It can't be tied to the client or a transaction. So, uh, so often what I get as an as an example is, I need to, I need to pay off my car. Well, how are you going to pay off your car? Oh, I need to sell more homes. Uh huh. Now, reduced debt isn't paying off something. Doesn't mean you won't pay something off in order to reduce debt, but you're not tying it directly to a transaction. Those of you in bold, we kind of did something like this. So you brain dump, then you prioritize that. And then you said, well, what is the job? What are the five things I would need to do in order for that to happen? So for instance, Craig would be lose 20 pounds. Is that an actual goal? It is. I don't think I'm gonna hit 20 though. Why? But yes. So lose 20 pounds. Sounds like an affirmation. Well, it is. Um, Craig can lose weight really, really fast. So lose 20 pounds, and what are the things that I need to do? Eat healthier. Systematic cardio. Eat more donuts, bulk up. <laughs> <laughs> Train with Cameron three days a week. Okay. Now what do you think would happen? What do you think would happen if I did that? Get swole. Get swole. What? Get swole. Get swole. The hell's that? Swollen. 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 I didn't know what that was. Like, okay. Nobody said I want to get swole. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your throat. I want to get lit. I want to get lit. I want to get lit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so does everybody have it done? Well, I'm standing. You're standing. You guys stand when you're done. Oh, we're standing. Oh. Um, sure. That wasn't that, well, was, that was not the direction. That was a one time exercise. Okay. I'm seeing a theme here. Yeah. Do we, do we stand? Do we sit? Do we sit? How about half? Squat. Get lit, fam. That's lit, fam. So, wait a minute. Everybody done? Hey, while you're standing, I want you guys, at, when I tap your shoulder, to give me your one, three, five. Say it out loud. Your one thing is? Arsenio? Oh, yeah. Yep. So what's your one thing? Nope. You're going to actually give me your one, three, five. Oh, okay. So it's how many transactions? Uh, I put 30 slash 15. You didn't tell me. So. Okay. So 30 closed units. What's your priority number one? Uh, priority number one is NODs. Notice the defaults. Mm -hmm. And your five strategies on priority one? Uh, well, one, property radar. Two, five. chase dead people. Text. Mm -hmm. the other one? Uh, and then ascertain owners and all that. Okay. And then you look like you're missing one still. Couldn't really think of another one, to be honest. Anybody think of if he's chasing so notice of default? Drive by. Drive by go to the funeral. Or go to um, <laughs> <laughs> go to the funeral. Go to. Man. You say go to a funeral. You meet a lot of people at a funeral. So maybe maybe probate court. <laughs> <laughs> probate list. Go to probate the calendar. Probate filings. Cemetery. What does those already be established though? Not necessarily. I'm just giving you an idea. Okay. Okay. So what's your priority number two? Uh, prospect and people that I know, like my sphere of influence. And okay. All that. Um, so what is the prospecting method for the people that you know? Uh, well, the one, the one thing. Kind of stole off of yours. <laughs> but uh, you know, create the base, create a database, and then contact them. Okay. okay. Let's help him out a little, guys. Yeah. Database comes from where? So this yeah. is this is this who, is his tab max. Yeah. So who all who are my your all my past clients that I've taken care of and connected with. Okay. Who else? Uh, your family. Yeah, family too. Your friends. <laughs> and same friends. Yeah. Uh, your sphere of influence, past, repeat, and referral. So are you going to phone prospect them? Mm -hmm. Most of them are. And are you going to, uh, are you going to run a gratitude or a requesting referrals? 
Brent? Yes, but I also said offer stuff to them whenever they come to Vegas that has, doesn't cost me money. Okay, awesome. Such as a walk into the nightclub or something like that. Sounds like you have a newsletter coming. Here's the things to do in November. Oh, and here's the deals and all that stuff. Sounds like there should be a website maybe put together for that. <laughs> like a Facebook page? <laughs> and Brian's like, what? Like, that gets updated every day, every week. People add it, free events, discounts, coupon codes, all that stuff, people coming into town. Okay, so now what's your priority number three? Uh, become a stronger leader in business and family. Okay, is that smart? Specific, manageable, repeatable, achievable, and timely. Become a stronger leader in business. No. I had a debate on Facebook with Trish Williams. Some of you probably saw it. She was kind of, she had a little bit of a pity party. And she had she had congratulated me on winning the Cultural Icon Award. And the, she's like, congratulations, Mr. Cultural Icon. And I kind of thought, well, I know you well enough. I don't know if that was a compliment or not. Like, I don't know. And then like 30 minutes later, she posts something on Facebook and says, you know what, I'm struggling here. I, you know, real estate's not easy and I see some people do it and it's so easy for them and you know, blah, 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 what am I doing wrong? And I get up every morning and I work and ah, uh, uh, uh. And of course me being analytical, I'm like, girlfriend, like what looks like on the outside is not necessarily what's on the inside. And so I, I messaged her back in public and I said, first of all, like you've got this, like you're really successful. This is your second full-time year in real estate. You're gonna do 50 to 60 transactions. Like this is all in your head and keep inspiring. Now I said something else that's public. You guys, you guys can all read it. She wrote me back and she said, um, you know what, thank you coming from you. That means a lot because you make it look really easy. How many times did you read it? Because you said that word for word. <laughs> Once. I'm getting a coach this year. Right? I'm getting a coach this year to, to help stay focused. You really earned the cultural icon award. Congrats again, and thank you. Trish Williams, it's not, and we all know that I. We all know that I have my own internal struggles, just like everybody else, and I have coaches as well. Some people know. Dot dot dot. And I am not strong as I appear to be. Dot dot dot. Is a different sentence. Real estate simple. It's not as easy. Don't worry. So what I was saying to her is. If you're gonna judge what you're doing based on what you see somebody else doing, you will never be successful in real estate. You'll never be successful in business. Like, make no mistake, guys. Like, there are days that I'm in tears. There are days that I feel defeated. There are days that I am down and I'm like, holy shit. But how I participated here Strategy? Uh, walk neighborhoods, sold realty, 
So door knock. What neighborhood, what radius of that neighborhood, minimum standard, half mile radius, 60 doors, okay. same zip code, like you make the decision, but make sure it's on there. Um, Next one. So, uh, uh, door knock, so door knock the neighborhood. Yeah. Next. Oh, really? And I was going to. I was gonna like hit you next. Oh, I didn't know. So go down. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> <laughs> um, make some kind of takeaways from the open house. That they where's your Where's your so open houses? So circle prospect. Yeah. And then circle prospect neighborhood. Or circle prospect quarter mile and circle prospect half mile radius. Okay. Write that in there. Whatever it is. I would say circle prospect quarter mile. What's number two? Well, three. So uh, na neighborhood, no. Uh, so door knock. How many doors? Well, these are minimum. It's super clear, guys. It's what, 60? I don't know what you're saying. Who can help her here? Who has door knocked before? I have. What's a minimum number of doors to be successful for your open house? Minimum. Uh, answer? Contacts or just doors? Door, like doors that you have to knock. Well, you can, I can walk out and hit 10 doors and go, all right, door knock. <laughs> no, that's not enough. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so 25 doors an hour. I love the metrics on that. Write that down. If you're door knocking, you should be able to door knock 25 doors an hour. That's a solar statistic right there. <laughs> Uh, I would take I would take larger steps. <laughs> so if you are if you are phone prospecting, you should be phone prospecting eight to ten contacts an hour. High efficiency, medium efficiency phone prospecting five to seven contacts an hour. Low efficiency, one to four contacts an hour. Low efficiency, 144 contacts equals one listing appointment taken. Medium efficiency, 60 contacts equals one listing taken, uh, one listing appointment taken. High efficiency, 24 contacts equals one listing appointment taken. This, if you're in bold, these are your bold numbers. Start with them. Challenge me next year when we get really clear and you go from 20 deals to 40 deals and we focus on your efficiency. There's a couple in this room that that's where we're at. Majority of you, just know your numbers. Okay, so did you get clear? Okay, so for priority one, open house. The strategies are circle prospect a quarter mile, door knock 25 doors minimum. What's the third one? Okay, generate call to action flyer and distribute. What's number four? Who can help her out? What, so she's open houses, so she's door knocking a quarter mile. Yeah. Or she's, I'm sorry, she is circle prospecting a quarter mile radius. She is door knocking a minimum of 25 doors in the neighborhood. These are the strategies for her open house. She is generating a call to action flyer. That means here's information, and if you do something, you're going to get what you want. Okay? What else? We're missing two. If you're doing open houses, what else do you do? I mean, do you, do you, do you track every lead that comes into the open house? Yeah. And then do you follow up with that lead before 8 p.m. evening of? That would be awesome. So if your strategy is to take the contact information for every single person that walks into that door, and then you follow up with them by 8 p.m. that night, you will do, yes, um, 
we are. Ross will take them and he'll regenerate your one through five. Okay, so priority number two. Okay, so that's not completely smart. So I would say database. You know what that experiment was? No, smart. No, that actually means smart. Smart. So if you look here, um, does anybody have 306090? Should we print any of those? 306090? Smart measure. Okay, it's yeah. repeatable. Yeah, no, I know that. Repeatable yeah. Yeah, she knows. Okay. So let's help her out here on uh, databasing. So database your entire sphere of influence on a smart 36 on a uh, Ford 36 campaign. A what? Ford, F-O-R-D, 36 campaign. Family, occupation, recreation, stream, and a 39 <laughs> touch. Ford. So when you're talking to somebody that you know, you should be following a Ford script, which means family, ask them questions about their family. Occupation. Occupation, ask them questions about their occupation. R is recreation. Their kid is in sports. They went on a trip. And D means dream. Okay, so if every time you talk to these people, you focus on one of those and you put the answers into the database, you will build a really, really strong database where you always have things to talk to them about and none of it has anything to do with real estate. That's how you sell homes for people that know you, like you, and trust you. Dreams. Dreams. It's called Ford. Family, Occupation, Recreation, and Dreams. Did you guys go to Cambodia yet? When you wanted to go there. Okay, <laughs> so if you were to database everybody that knows, likes, and trusts you, run the Ford trip, and put them all on a 39 touch, that covers past clients, repeat referrals, sphere of influence. Doesn't matter what boundary you're in. Okay? So now the five strategies are what can you do to communicate with them? The H is ham, the B is bacon, the E is egg. <laughs> <laughs> There's a B in there? She's like, what? Did they do her for my sphere of influence? Thanks, Ross. I don't know if my sphere of influence. It's different. Now you're just adding the ingredients. You decided to make a cake. What do you need? It's no different. So you are, so, so how, you can call them. So phone call them with the gratitude script. Follow up phone call. Bring them home too. Two months. Me too. With a growing your database with referral script. And then 39 touch. And then every month add three pieces of information about them to the database. Talk about shaving head too. Okay? Because Diana Kokoska says that we should be contacting our database, who know us, so our have mets every how many days? Days. Nope. Our have mets. Every week. Nope. Every three days. Nope. Every four days. Nope. Every five days. Every three months. Every, every 14 days. Fourteen days. Oh, oh. 14 days. So if you systematically talk to them once a month and the database manager talks to them, 39 times a year, what is that? So who is them? Twice a month. Your database. That is your database. So she's going to communicate at this level with your sphere of influence, repeat, past clients, and referrals. Have next. Well, I have no repeat, past clients. Oh, yes. Yes. So if you still own your bakery right now, you walk back into that little town in Kentucky and opened up a bakery right next door to the one that you just sold, would you be able to generate business from them? Yes. So why aren't you reaching out to those people saying you're in business because your principal got a hold? Now I'm in Las Vegas and I'm taking my bakery business to the real estate business. And we had
had a great transaction. We had a great time. We were great clients and, and customers. Who do you know? Yeah. If you do, you gotta think why, not narrowing you. Those people want you to still be successful. You want to like make sure that they know who you are. That's it. And they may not be able to walk into the bakery shop tomorrow and buy a piece of bread. might have a realtor right now. That realtor might do something. In fact, they usually do. They do something that pisses them off, loses contact, gets out of business. Like right now, realtors are going to get out of business. That's what they're going to do. So are you creating and, and taking over mind share? You just want to be in a position to do it. So when your business one falls out, you're there. That's how you're going to answer. So 39 plus 12 is what? Thank you. How many weeks in the year are there? 52. 52. Most people take how many Brandon, weeks off Brandon, Brandon. for a vacation? Two. Most people? Two. Yeah. Like three times. <laughs> so if you just get a hold of your people one time a month, and she gets a hold of them on a 39 touch, your clients, repeat referrals, and sphere of influence will be contacted on average at once a month. And they won't even realize that they're being contacted. Once a week. Once a month. Uh, sorry, yeah, once a week, you're right. Once a week. But it doesn't feel like they're getting contacted once a week. They will do business with you. Gary Keller says, a database of 266 will generate six plus new pieces of business plus you and six referrals. That's 12 deals off of 266. How many of you in this room have more than 266 in your phone? Raise your hand. Yeah. Those are people that know you, like you, and most of them are going to trust you. So you've got 12 deals just sitting there in your phone. Okay. So, and then what was your number three? Let's move through this quickly. Lose 20 pounds. Lose 20 pounds. But what do you do? What are your five strategies to lose 20 pounds? Eat better and have a meal. You don't want to train with me. Train with Cameron. Nice guy. Is Connor a trainer too? No. He's a trainer. He's just so swole. He's not a trainer. He's more serious. He's too swole. He's too swole. He's going to work you hard. Exactly. That's what he's going to do. He's going to be on strike. All right. Last. You're still missing two. for your your uh, your goal as well that training time eating time uh, meal, meal prep time fat loss measurement time scale time all that stuff yeah you can do that no potluck at work um, yeah okay so good so let's give her two claps that is your business plan for 2019 is there any changes you want to make okay moving on you're up Okay. Your one, three, five, as fast as possible. Um, okay, one is um, building out my Vegas SOI. Nope, your <laughs> goal? Wait, that was my, oh, sorry, my goal was 36. 36, your priority one? Uh, building out my Vegas SOI. So? So my Vegas network. Okay, building out is where I'm stuck on it not being smart. Okay. Build out. What build does that out. mean? Build or it. Work on. Mm. Where are you, you at mean? right now in that? Oh gosh, well it's not a priority of mine. Well, how many are in your Vegas he SOI? Wants you to quantify it. Um, and I wouldn't even say SOI. SOI, guys, is not something you can create in 12 months. In general. Okay, we could. Like there could be a, I have a boyfriend, we're real hot, we're gonna get together real fast, and we got engaged in 90 days. Okay, that's kind of an exception, and that would be an SOI. Your build out your Vegas have met network have met okay okay I guess I and how I many do you have now 
I don't know how many I have. I haven't yep. been, but I've been so focused on work that I have not been building any sort of network out here yet, and I feel like that's going to be a major source of business. So Gary Keller says, if you have 266 Mets in your yeah. database, you will generate 12 deals. Mm -hmm. So could we say, build my Vegas Met database to 266? by December 31st, 2019? I, we could say that. I just wouldn't feel comfortable saying 266 exactly for business. 133? How about 900? Um, Give me a number. Okay, let's just do 266 then, so yeah. put a number I right want there. you to be able uh, to achieve it. Well, I can achieve it, okay. it's just, yeah. So then, what would be the strategies of getting 266 Mets yeah. into your personal database? Yeah. Or, well, or not sphere of influence? First of all, I need to actually import my sphere into Burbity. I haven't even done that yet, so that's okay. why I can't even give you a number. Okay. Um, so that's going to be the first thing, is I need to put it on the Excel sheet and get it in there so I know what I'm working with. Or just input them. Um, so you can do it yeah, I've been doing it slowly, but I actually need to like import I hope Art's in there. everything. He is, <laughs> yes. Okay, I think Patty um, good. put it in there. Um, and then my next strategy is to spend an hour a day working on actually meeting with or connecting with more people in the area. Um, I could do that a couple different ways, but just actually spend time on a daily basis because it's not a priority of mine right now, so I need to work on that. Okay, so for that, I would say, and this is going back to adding 266 okay. METs to your database. Okay. So actively prospect using Ford Script okay. one hour a day. Actively. 